Hello everybody and welcome to another Python 3 tutorial video with sockets. So in the first video I showed you guys uh, just the creation of a socket and using it to uh, request some data. Uh, then we did a port scanner, then we combined threading and socket for a th uh, threaded socket, or <laughs> a threaded port scanner rather. Um, now we're going to go back to the purpose of sockets again and we're going to be talking about sending and receiving data using sockets. Uh, so with that let's go ahead and get started. So I think um, I'm just going to do one big control A and delete here. Um, and then we'll go ahead and here we're going to import socket. And then we're also going to import sys for system. Now uh, we're going to do a couple of things. First we're going to say host. And host is just going to be blank for now. Um, it's sort of like arbitrary. Uh, basically this just means that you're willing to accept um, or it's going to be like all interfaces pretty much. Then ports, we can specify any port that we want. Uh, for this, let's just do 5555. Um, you could put almost anything in there that you want, but we'll be using 5555. So now what we want to do is we're going to say s equals socket.socket. .socket. This should be pretty darn familiar by now. Socket.af underscore i, oops, unit, <laughs> inet, and then socket uh, dot sock underscore stream like that. Um, again, just the address family and sock stream, uh, so we can use the internet, not UDP. Next, um, at this point, we've created a socket. Now what we're ready to do <clears throat> is we want to bind this socket. So let's say try s.bind, and this has to be, again, uh, tuple, so we're going to say host and port. So we bind that. And then um, accept, um, and really the only exception we want to accept here is a socket error. Um, accept socket error as E, and then if we get that, we're going to print string E. So what was that error? Let's just print it out. Now, at this point, we've bound the socket, and now what we can do is we can go s.listen. And then in here you put a parameter, we're going to put 5. And basically what this parameter does is it's it's kind of like a queue, or it is a queue. And it's basically how many incoming connections will we fit into queue before we turn the connection away because we have too many. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be listening um, on port uh, 5555. And now we'll be able to make a connection um, to it. So uh, let's do the following. So we're going to go uh, connection address equals s dot accept. And then we can actually go ahead and like we can print out some information on the connection. So we can go like this. We can say print connected to colon and uh, we'll do plus. Uh, ADDR for address zero, and then we'll do another plus um, uh, this will be okay there, and then plus ADDR one, and actually let's do string ADDR one, and that should do it for us. So now uh, we should be able to run this. First, let's see if we get any error running it. It does not look like we did. So we're running and we're waiting for a connection. Now what you can do is come over to your command.exe or if you're in bash and use the following commands. So you could say telnet um, and then localhost 5555, hit enter. And there might be a couple of can't speak. A couple of trouble for some of you guys, um, but first of all, this worked. We've it, we've got the hey, we made this connection. First of all, the connection is over at this point. <laughs> there was not really a, a retaining any connection. Um, but anyway, you can see that we were able to make that connection. It was listening and it connected and received some information from the person who connected to it. Now, um, if you're on Windows and you typed telnet and it says telnet does not exist or that command is you know doesn't exist, you go to uh, you know, start control panel, bring that down here. You're going to want to go to programs and then over programs and features, turn Windows features on or off. Click on that 
and then wait while this makes a list and come on down to telnet client you'll want to make sure that box telnet client telnet client is checked and then telnet will work on your machine similarly if you're on another machine um, you know like if you're on linux or something you might not have telnet automatically installed so sudo apt get install telnet and then you'll be able to use telnet okay so that should cover it. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, getting this to work, uh, feel free to leave them below. You sh it should be able to. It should work for you as soon as you uh, install Telnet. Um, so, anyways, uh, that's it. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support, the subscriptions, and until the next video, uh, where we keep that connection open, we do a little bit better uh, listening, and we do some cool stuff. So, stay tuned for that.